I'm not here to lecture you. I don't know why I'm shocked. I'm not shocked. I am disappointed. It's fucking ignorant. Embarrassing. <laughs> and welcome back to my youtube channel so guys it is finally over the past i don't know what has been month and a half has been a roller coaster of emotions my point is love island they say is finally over i can't believe that this time has passed so quickly lmao not me talking like i was on the show since the show is over i feel that since i did a first impression i should do like a final thoughts video on the whole series as a whole talk about some things that really pissed me off and believe me there are quite a few i asked over on my instagram if there was anything in particular that you guys wanted me to talk about rant about any opinions you guys had on the show so i've got a few of those and yeah it's just gonna be a little chit chat slash rant slash final thoughts video on love and SA. so the biggest problem and like the main reason why i wanted to film this video of like a final thoughts on the show was the fact that i really hoped that because it was a south african show not only south african but like the first rendition of an african show i would not have to watch a show with no one that looks like me on it just for reference um i'm gonna put up a picture this this is season six of love island uk and that is the kind of versatility and representation they had in their casting this is the cast of love island SA. i know i didn't mention the issues of race in the show in my last video that i did of my like my first impressions but the fact that a, a show in africa a show in south africa the rainbow nation decided to go and fully cast an entire tv show without a single dark-skinned woman in it speaks volumes it says so much and i don't know why i'm shocked i'm not shocked i am disappointed but every single week they were bringing in more bombshells every single girl on the show was either white mixed race and the black women that were on the show were all light skin or like, like just say you hate dark skin women but no if i say that i'm just an angry black woman which is a whole thing on its own but wow rapid blue and mnet really thought that it would be okay to just not put any dark-skinned people on the show well dark-skinned woman and i'm specifically talking about the dark-skinned woman because you had nebel which was like a medium skin gent you had josh who was dark-skinned melanated to the gods which was great and i have no problem with that my problem is the fact that it feels like it's so easy for society and mainstream media to accept dark-skinned black men but when it comes to dark-skinned women we just don't receive the same energy as a black woman it's hard enough to watch shows in the uk and in the us and whatever and not see someone that looks like you but when you're in your home country and you feel like like you feel erased from the narrative of the country that is that's literally it the show completely disregarded the existence of dark-skinned women um yeah so every week they'll bring in these bombshells that literally easily could have passed for all being the same race i'm even i'm talking down to the white girls millie's tan was something else her and timna were the same color at some point and again i have no problem with timna tyler uh tion like nothing against them like they're all gorgeous they were all incredible the girls on the show were banging i loved them so timna tyler tion um kitty was mixed race and mishka mishka was probably the darkest skinned woman on the show and she was indian so i don't understand where this ignorance towards dark-skinned black women came from well i actually do a truth in colorism but i'm not here to lecture you on the history of colorism so yeah i wanted to start off with that point because wow if they're gonna keep casting the show like that they might as well keep the rest of the seasons to themselves because it's really it's embarrassing it's fucking ignorant it is so ignorant for them to just ignore the existence of dark-skinned women i don't think that a lot of people realize that not like i'm a grown ass woman <laughs> oh my gosh that felt so stupid to say but yeah i'm grown as fuck and as confident as i am in myself and how i look and everything that i am i know how disheartening it is to not feel seen and to not see people that look like you and in positions of representation it's like by not casting any dark-skinned black women on the show they are literally saying they're like dark-skinned black women they're not hot dark-skinned black women aren't hot singles not in south africa dark-skinned black women are not worthy of love what why would we put dark-skinned black women on a show for hot people where they go to find love 
that's literally how it feels so yeah for that reason i felt like with each passing week and with each bombshell that was coming into the show i was kind of just getting more and more disappointed and heartbroken at the fact that there was no one on the show that looked like me like wow that that was bullshit and yeah that that is my hot take now that i've said my first little piece I asked on my Instagram if there was anything in particular that you guys felt about the show, like what were your kind of final thoughts. And wow, um, a vast majority of you guys didn't like it. Some people talked about the production, um, and I did mention the issues with the production in my last video. Overall, there was a lot of quality dips in the show. Oh my gosh, and don't get me started on what they call a date. That shit was so embarrassing. The one. They literally went out, they were sitting like basically in sand on some dry ass grass and in front of them was like a plate of bultong, knickknacks and then to drink they were drinking cream soda. No, tell me, what woman in her right mind would say like, <laughs> you could tell the girl Tyler, she was like, and this is... And then there were other times where people got like really nice like proper dates. The thing is with Love Island, obviously they're like, especially now with COVID, they're kind of filming in a production bubble. So I understand that they don't, like even on the other shows, they don't do the most with all of the dates. It's only right at the end where they go on really extravagant dates. But no, guys. The dates were like a 2 out of 10. So ghetto. What kind of person would want to be taken on a normal date like that? Not a damsel. The production needs to step it up. I'm pissed. That there was no Casa Amor. What do you mean? So, I don't know. If you watched any of the other seasons of the show, then you'll know that um, around halfway around halfway through the show, they do this thing where either the girls will leave and go to a separate villa and the guys will stay in the main villa. The separate villa is called Casa Amor. House of love, right? And in both villas five new boys and five new girls will be staying with obviously like the opposite sex like think temptation island vibes right and then they'll come together and they'll have the choice whether to leave their partners that are in the other villa or stay with them and yeah it's just it causes so much drama it's so hot people be breaking hearts like it is just all the freaking tea and i can't believe we didn't have it but from the second i saw whatever they called a villa for love, I did say, I just had a feeling. Like, surely after Lotto Star left, the budget was just... It was depleting. So, whatever. It is what it is. Honestly, the production value was overall just not it. Rapid Blue did both seasons of The Bachelor and the current season of The Bachelorette. So, I don't understand why or how they dropped the ball this hard on Love Island. It's like they took all the interns that weren't working on one of the other shows and they were like, you guys just work on this the biggest problem with the show i felt like they gave the show to be produced and recorded by people that have never seen the show but they did improve a lot throughout the course of the show another person on my instagram mentioned that the show was missing me girl and i completely agree not to toot my own horn but i think we can all agree i would have been the light of the show the show was missing dark-skinned black women i mean it just missed the the splat, you know, the, the flavor. Where is the flavor? Another problem that I have. Now hear me out, okay? I understand that Timna is now South Africa's sweetheart. She really is and she freaking, like she totally deserves it. She had the win on lock from the second she stepped into that villa. I feel like by making her not only the first black girl in the show, but the only black girl in the show for so long, that yeah it was it was kind of a no-brainer for the country to root for her if you saw anything on twitter then you know that people were like this hand is winning and libo honestly was just lucky enough to hop on her bandwagon because anyone that timna would have ended up coupling up with would have won the only thing is i feel like that kind of the whole setup of the first bit of the show literally didn't give anyone else a chance yeah a lot of people didn't like it i got so many comments that were saying that um they watched the first episode and then didn't watch anything else, which granted, if the first episode is the only thing you saw, yeah, you were probably in the right. 
I felt like a lot of the time it was just kind of boring. Like it just didn't, it got more interesting as you got more invested in it. And I love me some trashy reality TV. So I will watch it all like I did. But yeah, there was just a lot of the time where I feel like they weren't pulling the story together as well as they could have. And then we have Millie's rape joke. So if you don't know, if you didn't see, cause it got edited out. One of the Islanders, Millie was having a conversation with another islander, Tanya, about the boy that Tanya was coupled up with, which is Ross, and he has said that he is a virgin, right? So they were just talking about how Tanya was feeling about his morality with regards to his sexuality and all of that stuff, and Millie makes a joke that Ta if Tanya wants to have sex with him, like she just should, she should just rape him. She literally said those words. And in a country like South Africa, where gender-based violence is such a pandemic, to make a joke like that just shows kind of how ignorant you are to what's going on. Not only are you making a joke like that, like ma'am, you are on national television, not even just national, the whole world is watching you right now and you're just making jokes about, about rape. Like that just, that irks me so much. And then to make it worse, when people were calling out Love Island for, first of all, Millie said it, second of all, they actually, edited that into the episode like they let that roll on national tv and then they edited out after they started getting backlash but never apologized for it now that millie's come out of the villa i know that she did issue an apology for it which is like whatever um but love island themselves and rapid blue never apologized for including that in the episode as well so it's kind of like millie's not getting as much heat as she should be getting for what she said even though she apologized the coin turns both ways because if one of the male islanders said something like that it would be a whole different story which isn't fair but the rape joke was really disgusting it was embarrassing on millie's part and it was embarrassing on mnet and rapid blue for including it in the episode so someone said that overall they feel like the show was so problematic i completely agree because from get i felt like it would be too ignorant that they included that amount of black people in the first episode or first few episodes by accident i feel like they were using black outrage as a marketing ploy to get views on the show one thousand percent and then it backfired when they started losing sponsors right but love island in general just perpetuates so many problematic ideals like for how i started this video colorism and how so often the black women and particularly the dark-skinned black women are picked last are um, made out to look angry and intimidating and told that they are intimidating to guys just for the plain fact that there are black women on the show the fact that they actively don't include um people that are more overweight or normal size particularly in women because the men are allowed to be normal and have like you know the cute dad bods or be skinnier or <laughs> Or just not have super ripped bodies but when it comes to the woman the women have to be perfect bikini perfect or whatever flat tummy skinny waist fat ass like that is the standard for women and that's the standard for men which is just another problematic ideology that they have perpetuated on love island sa uh, we don't really get to see people that are normal sized on the show and then you get things like the rape joke which just shows how ignorant so many people can be to the problems in south africa surprise surprise and the choppy editing which is just like i said embarrassing are you not embarrassed this is really embarrassing um this one's a bit shady this one has a bit of a kick to it a lot of people were saying that the show felt more like a performance and a game than it needed to be i don't completely disagree with that because at the end there there was just so there was way too much going on the couples that were there half of them didn't make sense people that were still in the show that should have been voted out so long ago i'm not gonna name names but if you watch the show you know who i'm talking about <laughs> it is what it is but yeah i feel like with our version of the show specifically and this is a bit shady but it felt like the editors couldn't pull together a storyline so they started trying to force storylines on us it just felt like we were lacking so much context for stuff that was going on in the show because it was edited badly, which obviously just sucked. Somebody said, they were like, I think the win was a stunt to show that they're not racist. And that's my opinion. I disagree with the statement for one reason. Like I said earlier, Timna was set out to win the show from the beginning. There was no way anyone else even had a chance to win the show. So yeah, I don't think the win was a stunt. Out of the last few couples, obviously Libra and Timna were the only ones that were even 
standing a chance to win. Yeah, I don't think that the win was a stunt. I feel like the whole show just kind of felt like a PR stunt, if I'm being honest. Okay, so really quickly before the end of the video, let's just talk about the top four couples. Danae and Ian got sent home way too late. Like, they were in the show for way too long. Sorry, I'm so sorry, Ian. So the fourth place couple, we have Tanya and Ross. So this coupling was so unexpected. Again, a lot of these couples were just so random. <laughs> So Tanya and Ross came in fourth, which is, you know, not too bad. I feel like when they first um, started pursuing each other, not even pursuing each other, Tanya was pursuing Ross. The way she was going about it, I was like, ma'am, you are being so forceful. And then he lost Tyler so quickly. I was just like, this man's like hopped from one flower to another, like a little bee. But then I actually really like them together. Ross is so hot. I am respectfully waiting for a chance to shoot my shot at his DMs. Respectfully. Respectfully waiting from a distance. In third place, we had Xavier and Millie. Now, in my last video, well, my last Love Island video, it was just before Xavier came in the villa. And honestly, he gave everything that I needed him to give. He was funny. He caused a little bit of drama. Um, he was a bit of a douchebag when it came to ending things with Millie. He was really dumb for saying that he loved her that early on. Like, it just ended up blowing up in his face. Um, but him and Mishka are actually really sweet together. I feel like I liked him more when he came into the villa and then a lot less like as he stayed. But nevertheless, he's a really great guy, like really sweet. I kind of feel like I, I liked, I also liked Mishka more before she actually started being on the show. Do you know what I mean? Like she was just kind of there. She feels standoffish. Do you know what I mean? Like she doesn't seem the most friendly. And overall, I just feel like Xavier is way more into her than she is into him, which is sad. But that's just the vibe I'm getting off. Uh, all the best to them though. I personally feel like they should have come second because Millie and Assad still, they confuse me and weird me out in the most impeccable ways. But yeah, to Xavier and Mishka, congratulations. And then our runners up that just missed the one million ran are Millie and Assad. Now, this couple, this couple right here makes very little sense to me. And I'm just going to tell you why. How did this happen? When did this happen? This is another example. I feel like the storytellers are just not showing us everything that's going on because the fact that these two got together and stayed together and they actually low-key like work, just it baffles me to the ends of the earth. My feelings about Millie have gone like this, okay? Like really up and down because when she came in, I, I didn't like her. Then she was harmless and then I really liked her and then she was my favorite and then she got just more and more annoying when her and xavier were going through that breakup i was on her side guys but then she goes and starts making jokes about raping people like ma'am your ignorance is really shining hey but yeah nevertheless oh and aside shame <laughs> good luck to them i personally don't see this lasting very long and then even though i've said it like a hundred times in this video the winners were libo and Timna, like wow, Twitter was ready to go to war if these two did not win that 1 million rand. They are fantastic together. I just hope that everyone is in, for all of these couples, I hope that they're all in it with the right intentions. I hope they all found love on the island. I think that Timna and Nibo winning the show just proves a point that when an audience wants something, they want it. Do you know what I mean? After that first episode, when people didn't see what they wanted, they were like, this is our show now. It's just been, it's been incredible watching the reactions on Twitter and the memes on Instagram, the TikToks, everything. I feel like that's the, the best part about Love Island is everything that happens around the show. Honestly, it's so entertaining and so funny. Twitter was more entertaining than the actual show. Honestly, till right up until the end, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, more entertaining than actual shows. Because South Africans are funny. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. The show is all done. And now we wait and see how these lasting, all these relationships unfold. I'm already seeing a bit of drama on lives, on snaps. I can't wait to watch it all explode. Um, that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to leave a comment. Let me know what you think, how you feel about the beginning, how you feel about the middle, what you felt about the end, the winners, the couples, the cast. Let me know. Let's talk about it in the comments. Follow me on all my social media platforms. They are all at basically bum pair uh leave a like if you enjoyed the video or if you didn't like no one's gonna know if you lie and i will see you all next week bye